So I generally like everything when it comes to emulation. Granted, I have my own personal preferences. I think that emulators are useful and helpful at one time or another, but can become outdated when newer versions arrive. But I think I was recently proven wrong with MESS. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that MESS is an absolute mess. I, I said this before, I've said it on the forums, I'll say it on YouTube, and I'll say it again. I don't think that MESS is very intuitive. And figuring out the commands to make it work was also a pain in the butt. However, I figured it out. I've conquered mess. Hi, my name is Brad, and today in Unbroken Software Studio tutorial, I'll show you how to get mess up and running on your system and how to emulate the Atari 5200. There will be more systems to follow in the future, but for now, let's get to it. So let's download Mess. So I fell in love with this website recently called Emu CR or Emulator Crimson Rain dot com. Now this website doesn't do necessarily anything special, except for that it showcases and houses a lot of the most recent builds for a lot of the popular emulators and even unknown lesser known or in a development emulators. So for example, the Citra 3DS emulator and the X360 CE emulator both pretty much don't work, but they're here anyways so that you can test them out. So if you scroll down a little bit to the categories section here on the right, click on mess under arcade. Once here, we have a couple of options. Now, MESS has been integrated into MAME since version 0.161, and now MAME is currently on version 174. However, MESS can still be compiled outside of MAME. It's just that it's not compiled outside of MAME on the website, but other people can still compile it separately if they desire and actually i so desire to have it compiled outside of mames you'll notice that it says mess git 2016 6.5 so this build was compiled four days ago as of the recording of this tutorial and this is based on mame 174 so this is the most recent mess version so if you scroll down where it says download it says mess get x64 and x86 i've got a 64-bit os so i'm going to download this version if you have a 32-bit os download the x86 version on this page click the link to the download site that you prefer the most one fishier fichier fish this top one here this one and mega.co.nz are the two that i use the most when i see these links they got good download speed the links are generally not down and so on and so forth so i prefer those two download sites usually so i've created a mess folder on its own and i downloaded the package to here and then I extracted it into a mess 174 folder. Inside is the build of mess. And if you double click here, this will go ahead and open the UI. And surprisingly, the UI for this is actually not that bad. It's actually really good considering that uh, mess and meme aren't known for their UI, UX, and usability. And that's generally the problem that I've had with mess and MAME to an extent, but MAME actually works better than mess, if that makes any sense. It's not as much of a jumbled mess. Uh, it's still kind of a mess if you don't know anything about it. It's got a steep learning curve, both MAME and mess, but mess takes it kind of a step farther, and I'll explain and uh, show you why in a minute. But first, we're mostly not going to be using the UI <clears throat> in LaunchBox, but we do want to open it to come down here and configure options. Then you can come through any of these subsections here in the settings and change it around like you would want. Personally, let's open the video options. We're going to turn window mode on. We're going to turn start out maximized on. And we're going to turn GLSL on as well. 
I personally prefer Windows mode. Uh, you don't have to use Windows mode if you don't want to, but turning these on from the video option eliminates having to use extra commands. And we're gonna back out. You can change the sound options if you want. Miscellaneous options. And we're going to double click on skip information screen at startup. So double click this so that it says on. This is also another common uh, command line that people will use for mess. And if you enable it here in the settings, we're good to go. Let's back out one more time. Save configuration. Configuration has been saved. And then there is one more thing we need to change. Configure directories. And I'm going to be configuring the directory for the ROMs folder. So you'll notice that I have two folders in here, the ROMs folder and another folder when which I was testing things out. So we can remove that folder, but we are going to add a folder and we're actually going to go to where I have my MAME installation located. And you may be wondering why. Well, like I said, when MAME got to version 161, MESS was included into MAME. That means that any uh, builds or any packs that you downloaded also included MESS. So if you download a MAME game pack, uh, like if you download the MAME split pack from one of your favorite websites, the mess bios are also going to be included in that pack and we need those bios we need to know where they're located so that some of the systems will run some of the systems don't need bios but others do so we're going to double click on this roms folder which is where i have my mame 174 split pack i have it located in my mame roms folder and we're going to go ahead and add that to this now i double click on the roms folder and then i just pressed tab to set the folder so now the current roms folder is looking in the mess roms folder in a mames rom folder so we're going to return to previous menu and then we're going to save configuration one more time and there you go uh mess ini should be here and if you double click it open it with something like notepad plus plus and you can manually edit it here if you would like. You should see here you can copy the same format and add more paths if you need to manually in the INI. You can change other directories. You can do lots of other things from the mess INI if you choose to do so. But for me, uh, we're, we're pretty good to go. Over in Launchbox, let's go to Tools, Manage Emulators. Now, I've already got mess added, but go ahead and click Add. Then you're going to type in mess. You're going to browse to the location of where we have mess downloaded and you're going to double click on the mess 64.exe over in the associated platforms. Since today we are going to be taking a look at the Atari 5200, go ahead and double click the empty space under the associated platform. So uh, if you have some in here or if you have a brand new blank associated platforms list, find the first blank one here and a type in Atari 5200, just like I've got it. In the default command line parameter, go ahead and type in A5200 space dash cart. Your command needs to look exactly like this. And this is the secret sauce, so to speak, of how mess works. So I will clue so I will include a link to both of these things in the description below, but this is pretty much how you can get MAME to work really easily. So I want to emulate the Atari 5200. So on this webpage, I will hit control F here in the bottom left. I will type in Atari 5200 and we'll see here that it finds the name. So here on the left, it's green, meaning that, that the emulation for this system is either acceptable or good. Yellow means that the emulation is okay with maybe a couple of issues, but for the most part, it runs. Red means that it pretty much doesn't run. You can try, you may get a couple of games to even work and play well, but for the most part, the emulation for this specific system is pretty bad. Here to the right of the name is going to be the name of the BIOS is essentially what this is. So this means that this is just using the A5200 BIOS and that it is not based on any other BIOS. But if, for example, if we take the Atari 800, 
the Atari 800, which is a PC, is based on the A800 BIOS, and that's the Atari for the NTSC region, but the Atari 800 PAL region uses the A800 PAL BIOS based on the A800 BIOS. So for the PAL, you actually need both of these BIOS included in your pack. And like I said, if you get a main split pack, you should be relatively good to go without needing to go and manually find BIOS for all these systems. But in this case, we only need the A5200. This will also be in the description as well. But I found this by using the command line in Windows. I navigated to my mess.174 folder, and then I launched the mess64.exe file with the dash list media command attached to it. And essentially what happened was it spit out this very, 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 very long list of systems, media names, and image file extensions that are supported. So in this, we're gonna hit Control F to bring up the find option in Notepad++. We're gonna Control V to paste in A5200, and then we're gonna find the next mention of the A5200. And there's only one, so it brought us straight to it. So we do know that this is the Atari 5200 because this is the BIOS name. We also now know that it uses cartridges. So, we will also put in the dash cart. That's essentially how I found out A5200 dash cart with a space in between the two. But you'll also notice the Atari 800, for example, uses several different types of floppy disks and also uses two types of cartridges. So for this guy, it would actually be cart one for the first game and flop one for the first game, but they don't use the same file extensions. Cart is only used for .bin, .rom, and .car file extensions. The floppy command is used for .atr, .dsk, and .xfd file extensions. So it's very dependent on the file extension that you have. Depending on the file extension, it depends on the command you use. In our case, the Atari 5200 only has one, but it still needs to be a .bin, .rom, .car, or .a52 file for it to work. So with the Atari 5200 added to the associated platforms with the default command line parameter set, click on the box default emulator and then click OK and then close. So let's add some games. Let's go to tools, import, ROM files. Next, add files. We're going to navigate to where we have our Atari 5200 games. We will notice that they are the .a52 file extension, meaning that they are good to go. We're going to control A to highlight them all. We're going to click open. The list isn't exactly big, but it parsed fairly quickly. Click next. The platform for imported ROMs is the Atari 5200. Next. So the default emulator should automatically pop up as mess. And if it doesn't, go ahead and edit it again, make sure that you've checked the default emulator box, or even add it if you haven't added it yet, or otherwise just select mess from the drop down menu here. Click next again, use the files in their current location. We're going to download media from the Launchbox Games database and from Wikipedia. Next, it's going to log you in and parse emu movies. We're going to click select all and then next, next. And here we are with the list of games that it's going to import. Now, if there's a game on this list that you don't want to import, just go ahead and click the game and press delete on your keyboard and it will not import it at that current time. You will have to import it again, but uh, it will remove it from the list. Once that is done, you'll have your list of games. Now, you may have noticed that the file name is not in the mess format. So MAME and MESS like to rename games and BIOS to their own naming convention, as you may have saw with the BIOS. For example, well, it also likes to do it with games, where with MAME, you uh, should probably just drop your MAME pack into your ROMs folder and let MAME use the internal MAME database to turn the shorthand names into real names. And LaunchBox will use the same database to turn the shorthand names into real names so that they can be scraped. Mess doesn't need that distinction. You can just use your regular ROMs. And that's another thing that is a little bit confusing about Mess. 
it's a little bit archaic to get set up, but once it's set up, you're actually relatively good to go, and it's less strict than you may have assumed. So let's double click Buck Rogers Planet of Zoom. Since Mazd is based on MAME, you can also press tab in game to change the different options like input, for example, if you would like to do that. Ah! Ow. Okay, that started real fast and I died. <laughs> but there we go. The Atari 5200 is up and running. I had a bit of an issue getting this to start for a second because of my, uh... My buttons, I was, I kept, re I kept resetting instead of, uh, starting. Dear Lord! That's an assault to my senses. Oh, God. My ears and my eyes, I don't know what the hell that was. So there you have it. That is how you get mess up and running and the Atari 5200 inserted into mess and also running. Now, the system is a little bit confusing, so if you guys have any questions about this, please leave them in the comment section below. Jason and I are more than happy to answer any questions that you may have based on this tutorial. If I kind of glossed over everything or you need a bit more clarification on something, feel free to ask. If the tutorial helped you at all get mess up and running, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials and content in the future. If you like the sound of my voice, the link to my channel will be in the description below. I do lots of gaming content and I would appreciate it if you guys enjoy my channel to subscribe to me as well. Remember Freaks and Geeks to play more games and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.